Well, are you ready to rock and roll, Casey? I've been, I was born ready. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome, wherever you may be. Good morning, good afternoon. This is Double Your Profits Strategies for Increasing Revenue Without Adding More Pools. And I am so, so very excited to be joined once again by Mr. Casey Graham of Yummy Pools probably the fastest growing pool service company in America uh, at the moment. And so thank you, Casey, for taking time out of your day. And also, Casey's in Austin today at headquarters. He's in a, a yes. around the corner from me. So thanks for coming down. Yeah, thanks. We uh, wanted to fly here just to be here just for this webinar and these uh, voodoo donuts you stuffed us with. <laughs> <laughs> we can't lay claim to those. I think those are from Portland or Seattle, but I'm glad you enjoyed them. Uh, my name is Nikki Acosta. I'm the director of marketing at Skimmer. Casey, do you want to do a quick introduction for yourself? Yeah, Casey, um, CEO and co-founder of Yummy Pools. Um, I have been starting, growing, and selling uh, companies for twenty about twenty years now. And so, um, me and my uh, co-founder, who is here as well, her name is Renee, um, who is the amazing part of the relationship that y'all don't get to see she's walking by right now though but she makes everything happen um we've been doing this so we started growing and sold four different companies in four different industries and so we've been able to kind of see different industries and different types of uh, ways to do things and so hopefully um now we're in the pool industry and we've been in the pool industry uh, for a few years now and we are excited to um, share some of the things that we've seen as we've entered into this industry. And uh, Nikki, one of the things we went back and looked at, we've looked at 22 businesses, um, deep financial records in the past 18 months. And so today, I'm not going to be talking theory or talking stuff that we just came up with or some brand new ideas that we just thought might be good ideas. We're going to be looking at the hardcore data of what we're seeing in the pool industry that came from Nikki and the survey they did here at Skimmer, uh, compiled with our practical in the field knowledge with looking at actual books of actual pool companies. And we're going to bridge those two things together today and to hopefully give you all massive takeaways and the things that we're going to give you, you can take away and actually apply within the next seven days uh, to boost your profits. So can't wait to uh, help you all today. Yes. And, and for those of you who missed it, we did cover Casey's story in a previous webinar in January called From Zero to a Thousand Pools uh, in 365 Days. I think you're pushing 2,000 pools now, uh, and it's, it hasn't even been a year and a half. Is that right? That's right. That's right. Yes. And and so when people see this, they um, we've had different reactions. Sometimes people get, um, they get mad or they're like, this is stupid or like, you know, you, y'all can't have quality if you do that. Like all of these things come up in people's mind of the way things have been done is the way they have to be done. And, and I'll first be the one to tell you, um, our story is not your story. Everybody doesn't need to grow to a thousand pools. Everybody doesn't need to, you know, have a fast growing cut. You don't have to do that. So, you know, that the last webinar we talked about how you grow fast, this webinar is we're going to talk about how you grow your profits. So no matter if your business, if you have 20 pools or you have 2000, what we're going to talk about today is is profit lever so that you can put uh, more money back in your business. And so we've been profitable from day one. Um, we're actually now more profitable we were than when we started. So we've been able to use the strategies that we um, uh, talk about from how to grow. But then we also use these profit strategies we're going to talk about today to how to put more into the bottom line. And we did have a question come in. The, the webinar, the previous webinar that we did, we will send that out with the recording. If you missed it, definitely go back. There's a lot of really great content in there about hiring and retaining employees and stuff around mindset. It's um, it's definitely worth a watch. The, the feedback on that has been the most positive feedback we've had on any webinar. So highly recommend. And it's not something you have to watch. You can listen to it in your car. Uh, why are we doing this? So we did the state of pool service survey. Uh, we had 1,700 responses. We combined that with data from over 700,000 pools and spas in North America. And we asked a lot of questions. And one of the questions that we asked was around growth plans for this year. And what we found was that there are a good number of you that want to actually reduce your customer count and increase profitability. 
uh, and expand into new lines of business and offer your customers uh, other products and services. So we felt like this was a really good webinar as a follow-up to this survey to help you all increase your profitability uh, while potentially doing less work. So we're going to talk a little bit about mindset. We've got three hidden profit levers that we're going to talk about. We've got some hidden profit boosters, which you may know of, you may not. Some might be new to you. Uh, and then we'll cover some resources and we want to leave time for Q&A. The last webinar, we had a ton of Q&A and we want to try to get to those. Uh, if you are just coming in, we will record this. We will send it out to you. Uh, if you need to ask us a question, use the Q&A box or the host and panelist chat, prefer preferably the Q&A box. Uh, so if you hover over your Zoom bar, there's a little Q&A icon. Just click on that and you'll be able to message us directly. And with that, let's do it. Absolutely. So, um, Nikki, one of the things that when you put this idea of double your profits without adding any new pools out onto the internet <laughs> or you send out emails, you, you start getting backlash, you know, from pool industry people, right? So what's some of those things that you saw uh, because people go, you know, this isn't possible or, you know, whatever. So you saw that side of it, right? We, we're just trying to be helpful here, but then people kind of get agitated or angry or don't believe it or what, what did you see? There was a lot of disbelief. Like, there's no way you can double your profits without adding more pools. There's, you know, there's a, it's the internet. It's not a very kind place at times. Uh, there there were also a lot of comments again about, you know, if, if you're going to double your profits, you can't scale quality. Uh, and that was, that was one that we kind of touched on a little bit in our last webinar. But uh, as you have demonstrated, Casey, and, and as of other of our customers have demonstrated, you can, you can scale, you can find new avenues to revenue uh, without sacrificing quality. That's right. And so the very first part of this today is I have to say is number one, um, I'm not speaking from like classroom study talk and we're not speaking from, you know, some theory somewhere. This is over the last uh, 18 months, we've looked at 22 businesses, actual pool businesses that are from a one route, smallest one was 13, and we ended up buying it, uh, to the largest one was over 500 pools. And then our company now has over 2,000 pools, okay? And so from over 2,000 down to 13 and everywhere in between, we've looked at these. And here's a fact, within one hour, Renee and I, who I'm pointing at, who's in a room right next to me, within one hour of getting your profit and loss statement, out of QuickBooks or whatever you use and getting your, your balance sheet, Renee and I can usually find double the profit. We print it out and we start looking and we start circling the opportunity areas to where we see that the business could be run more efficiently or run differently to increase your profits. And so from that experience, that's what we're going to share today. But I know one of the biggest um, things to overcome is a lot of people think the pool industry is different. And so I've been a consultant in other industries where they would say, oh, this industry is different. Every industry is different. Every industry does have unique kinds of things to it. But business in and of itself is not that different. A large S&P 500 balance sheet and profit and loss all the way down to small businesses, there's practices and principles that apply across all different genres of business. And so I think one of the things that I've seen in the pool industry is that there's a lot of pushback to know we're different. And I will say you are different, but you're not totally unique with business. And so we've got to get, we've got to overcome this fear that there might be a different way of doing something. We've got to overcome our fear of losing customers. We have to overcome our fear of if we do some of these things that we're going to talk about, that we might make our team mad or we might lose some team members. We might have to overcome it. We have some of that fear inside of us that if we change these things, that these things could happen. And they might, but that's oftentimes what's blocking us from doing things like doubling our profit or growing the business. You know, the other thing is doubt. You know, this can't work in my business. If you're starting here today with this can't work in my business, then you're right. 
you're right. <laughs> it, it, it will never work in a business where you don't think it can work in. So everything starts with your mindset. And so my question for you would be, if you're starting with doubt, it's just as easy to start with uh, belief. You just choose and say, what, what if it did work in my business? How can I make it work in my business and change your questions? And let's say you go apply some of the things that it doesn't work perfectly, but let's say you don't double your profits, but you increase them by 50%. You're not going to be mad about that, right? So overcoming this mindset of doubt and skepticism that it can't work in my business. And then the last one is obviously tradition. The biggest thing I'm seeing with businesses that we are acquiring, that we're looking at, that we're partnering with, that we integrate with, is just doing the th same things the same way year after year and thinking that because I'm an industry expert of, I've been in the industry for 20 years, that that is an advantage. It is an advantage from the standpoint of what you know about pools. It may not be an advantage in how you structure your business, okay? Because the world has changed in 20 years. The world has changed in five years. There are different things that we can do now that you couldn't do back in the day. But we carry these same thoughts and things through. Like, I don't know if we could do that. Like, for instance, Yummy Pools, we're a virtual pool tech model. We have no office space. We're run completely off of the internet and Slack and all of these uh, software and technology products like Skimmer. And so... We built the company just totally different because we said, we're not going to do it. We're not going to have a big warehouse. We're not going to do those things. But again, I'm not saying you have to do that, but it can be done and you can do things effectively and do it in a different way, but you got to overcome tradition thinking. Okay. So what we're going to look at on the next slide is this is the three profit levers. Uh, we're going to look at how to increase prices, your chemical spending and the expenses in your business. Now, Nikki, I would say that this webinar is... Not as sexy as the last one because growth, right? Everybody likes to talk about just growth. There's hard work in this one. Like there's more detail internal thing. But the thing I like about this one better than even the last webinar is everything that I'm going to share with you, you can control. This is totally in your control. You can do all of these things. And that's what we call them levers. You can pull these three levers and absolutely crush it. So we're going to talk about price increase. Now I want to ask the audience for everybody listening, and I've got the the the, the chat or the Q&A. I don't know. What do they do, type in? Q&A or chat? Q&A. Q&A? Just let us know. Type yes if you have done a price increase or type no if you haven't done a price increase in the last 12 months. Yes, if you have. No, if you haven't. Yes, if you have. No, if you haven't. Yes, if you have. Okay. We got a bunch of yeses. We got some no's. Okay. Yes, no. Yes, no. Not yet. Okay, cool. Now, one more question. If you did a price increase, did I screw this up for y'all, Nikki, where y'all have to have a bunch of stuff that y'all have to go yeah, through? Yeah, it's all right. It's fine. We'll, we'll fix it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll ask one more question. If, if you did do a price increase, did you lose customers? Yes or no? Did you lose customers? Wait, guys, I can make a poll. Give me two seconds. <laughs> well, nobody told me. Nobody told me. All right, don't do it. We'll wait. We'll make a poll. I... Hey, Casey, while she's doing that, the, the, the reason why I wanted price increases to be a topic is because I was in Orlando for the trade show um, last month, and I met this really great couple, Skimmer customers, um, they've been in business for a while now. Uh, her husband has been a, a pool pro for two decades. And I asked them what they were charging. And they said, well, you know, it's really hard here. We're charging 105. And I was like, per stop? And they're like, no, per month. And I, I, you know, it, it's very hard to hear that. I, I understand that, you know, there are market fluctuations all across the US and, and pockets where things might be a little bit more and a little bit less depending on supply and demand. But you know what they told me is they were scared to do a price increase. And the reason why they were at 105, they had been at 100, but the reason why they went to 105 is because they felt like they, they had to just to, to break even. Uh, and so that really kind of prompted you know, this discussion about price increases, there was the only thing holding them back was fear. They told me we've had the same customers for over a decade. You know, they've been really great customers to us. We want to take care of them. Uh, so, so yes, coming back to that fear and doubt, yeah. uh, you I'll, owe it, you owe I, it to yourself. 
Look at this poll. This is way better way to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's cool. 80-20 principle. 80%, no, not many. Some lost a ton and then some so-so. Now, here's what I want to say about price increases. Most of you do price increases, but most of the time you're not increasing the prices as high as you can. Now, stay with me on this. Most of the time, you should do double the price increase that you just did. Your mindset will say, no, 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 it's not fair. I can't do that or whatever. You can. And I'm going to teach you a strategy for how you can do it to do double the price increase that you did or do them more often and not lose any customers. So that's our strategy. So the strategy that we've done, we increase 93% of the people's prices, 7% of the customers, uh, we keep them at the same price. And I'm going to show you how we do that. Okay. So when you raise the bar, you raise your profits. You're going to have better customers, better cash flow. Now, Nikki, I'm going to do the math for them. Okay. So for price increase at a hundred, if you've got a hundred customers at $200 a month, that's $20,000 a month of monthly revenue. A 15% price increase goes up to 230. That's $23,000 a month. If you do that and you have a 5% churn, you're going to lose $1,000 a month of customers. Now, here's what I've seen uh, pool, uh, pool people get squirrely with is they don't push high enough so you didn't lose enough customers, meaning you should have lost a lot of customers and pushed harder than you think you should have. And the reason why is, is because if you get higher profitability and higher revenue and you have way less customers to serve, all of your margins are going to go up. You have less staff needs. You have less chemical needs. You have less everything. And so I'm going to challenge you guys and challenge you ladies today on doing this. Now, um, I keep having the poll pop up in my uh, screen. Is there any way to get that off? Okay. So in this scenario, if you had a 5% churn and you lost 5% of the people, um, you would end up with 95 customers at 230, a $22,000 a month of revenue. And But here's the most important part that I wanted to talk about with price increases. So me and my business partner, Renee, we buy a company every month. What, once a month, we buy companies, okay? Or buy routes, the average pool company is selling, and this isn't this isn't um, always true. There's different things that matter, but the average pool company would sell for. You see the the increased company value twenty four thousand times three. The three is a multiple on your free cash flow, uh, your net operating income, or your EBITDA. Right, it's those kind of of factors that we look at. So you would just call it, you, some of you call it profit if you want to call it profit, okay? And so if you increase your annual revenue by $24,000, it increases the value of your company actually by $72,000. And so the greatest way to increase the value of your company if you want to sell your company is to execute price increase strategies, lower the amount of customers you have and have bigger margins because here's why the higher your profitability in your company, the more your company is actually worth. Meaning you might get a four multiple or you might get a five multiple on your business if you have bigger margins, okay? And so this is what we do. So the reason that me and Renee buy these businesses and Yummy Pools buys these businesses is because they're under-optimized, okay? We know that we can buy it at a 3X, but literally within 90 days, we can have that business at a 6X multiple just by working the strategies of price increase, of the chemical spending level, the expense level, of how they run their business. And so that's the power inside of this. It's not just about increasing prices. It's about increasing value. Now, for each one of these, there's a principle. Here's the process to go about doing this. And I'm going to give you then the practical explanation of exactly how you can do it. So the process you need to use, not you need to, that I would recommend you use is what we call fire bullets, then cannonballs, meaning don't just send an email, mass email out saying we're increasing our prices to everybody and here's what the price is, okay? That is a bad way to do this, okay? Um, the same is true uh, for sending a letter out. Here's a, here's, a, here's a letter. We decided what our price increase needs to be and send it out. Don't do that. The best... 
go, go back, please, Nikki. The best way to do this is to test different price points to small groups first, okay? So when we're running price increases, so if you've got 100 customers, I recommend personally emailing 10 of them, three different audiences with different price points. And so if you thought, oh, I was going to increase my prices by 10%, send out to your customers, send out a 20% price increase just to 10 customers. Meaning if you screw it up and everybody hates it and you lost four out of the 10, you're like, that's not good. But you only lost four out of the 10, but you still got a 20% price increase on the six, but you didn't do it for everybody. So you didn't screw yourself. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to test and let's say you send an 18% price increase out. And let's say you only lost one customer out of the 10. Well, I would much rather have nine customers with 18% profit increase in, in for those pools and lose one customer than, you know, if I if you would have done a 12% increase and kept everybody, right? So you've got to really work the math on that and send out different segments, small things at first and see what the response is, okay? Here's so important. Make the communication personal. We personally email every single customer about price increase. We don't send mass things out and we do it to hundreds of people. And we do this personally and you don't have to do all of your price increase all at once. You can do it rolling over a couple of months. If you don't have the time to send a hundred emails out to all of your customers, you can do 10 a week for 10 weeks and have a rolling price increase as well. But here's the principle. Ask, don't tell. This is how we've doubled the amount of price increase uh, that most people are able to do is because we don't tell, we don't mandate a price increase to our customers. We ask them if they would be open to it. Now, let's look at a practical example. This, y'all are going to want to, I'm actually sending you this. So you're going to have an opportunity to get all of our price increase emails, uh, all kind of crap. We'll give it to you in a minute, but uh, you can take a picture of this screenshot, but we're going to be sending it to you. Um, after the webinar, if you if you want it. So here's what we send out. This is the actual email I sent. Hey, and we actually put their name in. <laughs> the economy has been in turmoil for a few years. With rising costs from our distributors and wages increasing to hire and keep pool technicians, we are forced to do a small price increase. Most companies mandate a price increase and don't leave the customer with any options. We do not believe in doing this. Instead of a mandate, I wanted to personally ask you this. Would you be willing to accept a $9 per visit price increase starting on October uh, 1st, 2023? If this is acceptable to me, to you, no action is needed and you will see this increase added in your next invoice. If for some reason you don't want to or you can not accept this increase, all you have to do is reply to this email. I personally get every one of these emails and ensure that you don't see an increase on your next bill. We will keep uh, focus on making your pool yummy clean either way. Now, 93% of our customers take this and we get the price increase. 7% push back. Of those 7%, if we would have mandated the price increase, we would have lost most of them. So instead of that, we just keep them at the same price. And so people go, it's not all or none. No, the world isn't all or none. I would rather still have those seven customers, right? And 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 again, we lose a maybe 1% if, if we push. And if there's a bad customer that we want to fire anyway, you know, we'll say, okay, well then get out of here. Right. But uh, most of them do a negotiation. They'll say, I can't do $9 a visit, but I could do $5 a visit. I can't do $9. I could do $3 or whatever. So even inside of the 7% that don't take the full price increase, we still get a price increase on the large majority of those people because we ask, we don't tell. Now, what happens on the other side of the email? You can go to the next slide when somebody responds back to us. Let's say the customer doesn't accept your uh, increase reply. So what we say is, hey there, no worries. I understand and that's why we didn't want to mandate an increase, but partner together. Nothing will change for you and your prices. Appreciate your feedback. We value you. That's all they get. They move on. We don't change their price. Customer accepts it. It's very simple. Great. Thanks for your understanding. Have a great weekend. Okay. Now, if you want all of our examples, you can go to this tinyurl.com forward slash. Can y'all throw that in the chat or somewhere where they can click on a link um, if y'all want all of our resources for price increases? Um, I think Nikki or Suzanne or somebody can put that somewhere y'all can grab it. Okay, there it is. Cool.
So oh, sorry, that, that's price increase on monthly or or, or weekly or biweekly, you know, uh, services. A another price increase thing, like all of our customers, we don't allow people to be biweekly. So it, it, starting in the spring, so we tell all of the people that are biweekly, hey, you have to be weekly customer by this period, right? And so that's another thing that we do. And we only had one customer this year so far out of a hundred and something say. Well, no, I'm going to quit if I go by weekly. And say, okay, you can just quit, right? So uh, that's another one. Now, that's price increase on your regular service. Now let's look at some hidden profit boosters that we use. Service call fees, big deal. Most people undercharging, okay? So at Yummy Pools currently, we're 175 to come out for any reason, okay? We lose customers because of this. And you say, oh my gosh, we want to lose those customers. And the reason why is, is because your time is not free. And your time or your team's time, just I'm going to swing by and take a look and give a free assessment. Um, it's not a free assessment. It costs you money. And so one of the things that we do for all of our service calls is it's a minimum $175 fee is non-negotiable. The only time that is negotiated or we take it away is if we screwed something up and then we take it away and obviously we help the customer. But even if we have a new customer call in and they want us to come look at something where we get their credit card in advance, we're not just going out for free. And you're going to start to see this in the industry more and more as the industry becomes more professional that uh, just like you wouldn't expect an HVAC company to come by for free. You wouldn't expect a plumbing company to come for free. People should not expect you as a pool person to come for free. This is what's keeping a lot of profits down. And there's a huge profit. We get about an eight to 10% profit boost just out of service call fees that come in as well, which is awesome. Okay. Um, regular filter and salt cell cleanings. Priced right. Most of the time, people are undercharging for salt cell and for regular filter cleanings. For us, it's $175 for each. If people go, that's asinine. And it's like, no, our market can bear that. Again, I'm not saying that has to be your price in your market, but it needs to be so high where the customer thinks about it and goes, oh, wow, this is important. It's like, yeah, it's important. And yet it takes time to do. I know they may be easy for you to do, but they're not easy for the customer to do. They don't know how to take their filter lid off. They don't know how to clean a salt cell. So for you, you're, you undervalue yourself because it's easy to you or easy to your repair people, but it's very hard for them to do. So value yourself, price it. And then for, for things like this, whatever your price is, double it. And you go, oh, I can't do that. We're at 125. Test it. Ask six customers. It's 225. And then they go, if three of them go, we're quitting. You go, okay, that was too high, right? Then you back it back down. But you got to have a mindset of test, 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 test. You should always be looking to push up that because we live in a country with inflation. Workers are hard. Insurance. Bills you got to pay, we got to increase the money that we got to pay to our staff to keep good people. It all comes down to these things labor and parts, small parts too. A lot of people just keep stuff on the truck. We charge for every single thing, every fitting, every every nut, every bowl, every single thing you better be charging for. We do a shop fee in any of our repairs that we go out. So a lot of people in the pool industry, they just go, oh, for a for a, a you know motor swap, or it's going to be six hundred bucks, or it's going to be nine hundred dollars. It's going to be at that whatever the different price is that you have. We break ours out, and then part of one thing that we add is called a shop fee. So for glue, for rags, for any of the uh, the the blades on all of the 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 sawzalls that that go bad that you have to buy, all of those things that you don't have to buy every single time, but you are going to have to buy for wear and trail on, on the truck, on the tires and the vehicle and the oil change and all the different things that go into your business. There's a shop fee that's added on for each uh, thing. That's another profit booster you could put it there. Um, assessment inspection fees, right? So if somebody calls us and says, hey, will you come look at my pool for a green to clean? We go, absolutely. Um, here's what the price will be for the green to clean. But we take $175 as uh, on your credit card before we uh, the day that we come out before we make the stop. And then a lot of people go, well, well, why would you do that? You go, because I'm not coming to your house for free. You're just not doing it. We value our time. We value us as professionals. We value our team and we need to pay people to come by your house. And then, but we do say, but we'll roll it in. If we do the green to clean, we'll roll that into your green to clean. And then we'll give you a discount on your monthly revenue, a monthly service fee or something. And we'll create a deal for them. Right. So, but we make sure that we do that up front so that we don't just run around to people's houses, giving quotes. 
um, repair calculator. So one of the things we're going to give you, you need a repair calculator. And we've got a spreadsheet that Renee has built, which is awesome, that will protect your target margin. So for us, our target margin is 35%. And so we put all of our parts, we put our materials, we put our time, our trucks, wear and tear, all that stuff. And that's what gives us the pricing on our repairs. We're not just giving them numbers of what we think the market will bear. It's done by a calculator. And so we're going to give you that calculator as well um, if, you, if you want that from some of the resources. So these are some of the things on top of price increase that you can increase price or you can install in your business to create more revenue. So Nikki, you see, have we, we, have a, we have a couple of questions that I, I wanted to ask. Chantel Dooley asks, how do you handle those customers that want to care for their own filter or clean their own salt cells and not pay for that? That's fine. If they want to do it themselves, they can. It's their pool. We don't require them to use us to do that, but we do require them that if the pool is going bad, in some way, or there's algae growing, or there's some, they, they have a lack of clarity in their water or anything like that. If they say they're going to do it and they don't do it, then we'll just tell them that we're stopping being their cleaning company. Uh, like, cause we can't, we can't keep your pool yummy clean. If you're not willing to, you know, uh, uh, clean your fil cartridge filters, let's just say, or, or DE filters. And, and what are you charging roughly for a shop fee? I've had a couple questions about that. Um, I, it, it, it scales. I, I'll have to get Renee. It's in the calculator. I don't, I don't know today what we're charging, but it's small. It'll be 15, 18, 22, somewhere there. It depends on the, the size of the job, but it's in our calculator. So it's just a percentage. And, and is all that itemized on the invoices? Uh, it would say shop fee and it would give examples for, you know, those kind of things. Great. What else? Any other questions on this? 35% margin on pool cleanings and service as well, or just for repairs? Just for repairs. So we run, we run a 30%. We run at about, currently we're at about 27% overall company net profit. That's our, about 27% is where we sit. Most pool companies are in the, in, in the single digit, high single digits, low teens is where most pool companies are. Uh, some companies are uh, good pool companies usually are like 15% to 18%, but most pool companies have unneeded expenses to run their business that are eating up that, that 10% uh, that we don't have because we decided to structure our business a little bit different. Great. All right. There are still more questions coming in, but we'll go ahead and move on and circle back to some of these. Let's talk about chemical spend. Yeah, this is a good one. Um, hey, and I'd like, uh, Suzanne, can you put together one more poll for me? Let me know if you can do that. Sure thing. Okay. From the price increase section, I want to know, was that helpful to them? Yes or no. And then that's what I want to know. I want to know, was it helpful? And then if it was not helpful, then we're going to get uh, more details and send more stuff in our resources that can give them more detail. But hopefully it was helpful for the group. Okay. So chemical spending lever. Um, huge expense in this business. Um, one of the biggest things that we hear is people talk about the price of chemicals going up. Nikki, did you hear that at, in Florida and Vegas at the shows? Yes. Haas is coming out with a 4% increase on April 1st. I just found out. Got so it. Yeah, it's happening across the board. Yeah, consistently. So how do we deal with it? Um, and then how can you manage chemical spending in your business in a professional way? Even if you're actually, if you're a smaller business, it's easier to do this to start. And then to apply it as you get bigger, if you're bigger, it's going to take a little bit more effort to apply it to your business. But this is exactly how we control spending at a chemical level in our business. Measure the micro. Here's what I mean by that. Most, most businesses we have seen are um, what we call a top-down approach from budgeting. So top-down approach from budgeting, meaning there's just a budget. We just set it $30,000 a month or $10,000 a month or whatever. And we just set a budget and we just go, this is what we're going to spend on chemicals. Or the other way that we see the number one, Nikki, the number one thing we see is most people don't even have a budget. And here's what their budget is. We spend what we need for the pool. 
right? We spend what we need for the pool, meaning whatever needs to go into anybody's pool to make it healthy, that's what we spend. We do whatever it takes to make the pools right, right? That's not a good strategy as well, okay? Those are top down, meaning they're big picture, but they're not at the micro level. We believe in what's called bottoms up approach. It's a bottoms up to budgeting, meaning that we start at the micro pool per pool level and we apply something to it, a per dollar amount per stop and then we measure our technicians against staying inside of the budget now i'm going to show you how we do that good i'm glad the price increase stuff was good for 95 percent. it's a novel approach and i've not we've, we've talked a lot about price increases and that's not an approach that i've ever seen but uh you've proven it works and that's great good, good. okay now let's look at this okay here's how we 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 believe in coming up with a per pool budget for every single pool, all right? So let's say your, your business is currently spending $10,000 a month in chemical spend. And let's say that you've got 100 weekly customers times 4.3. So it's because some months have five weeks in it. That's the math. Um, so that would be 430 stops a month. And let's say that you spend $10,000 on chemicals at 430 stops. This is the most important number to know in managing your chemicals is how much per stop are you spending? In this scenario, it would be $23.25 per stop. Now, that's the first step in knowing it. So you can put up the process over here, Nikki, um, these steps, and I'm going to walk everybody through it. So you've got to find your chemical spend per pool number. That's number one. And then number two is that you set your per pool savings target. Meaning when we got into this business, we were doing what most people do and just thought you, 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 you got what was needed for the pool. But then we said, let's challenge that assumption. Let's see if we can set, let's see if we can spend half the amount that we're spending on chemicals, but keep the same quality as it relates to not losing customers and keeping the pools clean and clear. Let's just see if we could do it. Now, this is when your mindset stuff starts coming in of your fear and your doubt and your tradition. This is the way we've always done it. This is the way we've always done our chemicals. This is the way, you know, whatever. And so ours was just an experiment. So we took two months and we said, we're going to cut it in half. So we were spending, I think it was like 16. We said, we're going to go to $8 a stop. We're just going to test it. And we're going to see, do we lose more customers? Do we have more green pools? And we did it and it worked. <laughs> now, it wasn't perfect. We missed it by a little bit. We ended up having to raise it up a little bit higher, uh, the per pool stop. But if we never would have taken the approach to test something, we would still be spending all of this extra money. And so what you got to do is pick like a goal. So let's say in this example is $12 a stop. So $12 a stop times 430 stops a month is 5,160 month chemical spend. So that's a 48% less chemical spend. That's a $58,000 a year profit boost. Here's the most important part most pool companies aren't thinking about though. You increase the value of your company by $174,000. <laughs> so if you take that $174,000, plus you did the price increase of $75,000, you're looking at a quarter million dollars of value to sell your business if you wanted to. And I'm not saying you have to sell your business, but it's always better to have a business that's more valuable than less. Right. Because even if you own it, you want it to be more valuable to you. And so just by doing this, that's the kind of return you could get. Now, if your business is larger, you might get a 4X, 5X multiple on your business. It could be significant. I've seen, you know, half million to million dollar swings in company valuations just by managing chemical, chemical spend, equipment, supplies, these kind of things. OK. And so how do you do it? Well, you find that number, you set the per pool savings target, and then you measure per tech with a budget. And I'm about to show you how we do this in a second, where we literally, every technician has a budgeted amount because we know, because thank God for Skimmer, <laughs> Skimmer tells us how many stops that person has. And so we take that in this example, let's say it's $12. And guys, I'm not saying, and ladies, I'm not saying that yours needs to be $12. This is just a pure example. Okay. Okay. But let's say that you take that and you apply it to 50 stops a week. Um, so it'd be 12 times 50 stops a week would be their weekly budget that they could spend. 
And then we manage against that. Now, one of the things um, that, that is a side point that you need to do, and then we're going to go into how we manage the spending, is negotiate with your vendors big time. We negotiate every quarter with vendors. Every quarter we go to Superior, to, to, to Leslie's, to SCP, to Swimline, to any of the vendors that we have in our area. And I know you have different vendors in your area. And we negotiate them. And we literally bring in a pricing sheet and then we say, beat this to the other one. And every single time we come in, they lower the prices. So when is the last time you did vendor negotiation? I was standing next to a guy in Leslie's actually from my personal pool. I went by there on Sunday this weekend. There was a pool company owner at the counter. He was like, wow, this is so expensive. And then I just, I pulled him to the side and I said, Hey, have you negotiated with this manager of this Leslie's? Because I have every quarter. I said, just go over there and tell him you're not paying that and you want a negotiated fee that's like yummies. And he went over there and told them and they ended up dropping his fee significantly. <laughs> so they will literally drop your fees on, on chemical pricing if you negotiate them uh, and ask for it. So that is a no brainer you should do. But again, that has nothing to do with this point. I just wanted to put it in there because you can do that. Okay. Now, how do we manage this on a practical basis? How does this look? So if you... Uh, go to the that the QR code at the end or that tiny URL we gave. I'm giving you this. So you literally will have this today in your inbox. Um, this is how we manage our stuff, okay? So you can see our team over on the left side, each person. You can see a total monthly budget. You can see their current spend, their budget spent. And then we, we have a formula in there that'll show um, are they over, are they under, are they on track, right? And so this is what we're looking at every single week inside of the business to make sure our chemical spend is staying in line. And then you can see names, Austin, DJ, Jared, or whatever. And you can see inside of this that we're looking and every single Tuesday, all of our technicians, they get a text message sent to them, to, like to Austin, that would say, here's your budget for the month. Here's how much you've spent so far. And here's how much you have left for the end of the month. Okay. And the way we do this is that we allow our team members to have credit cards. Every single one of our team member has credit cards and every single one of them manage their own spending. Now inside of this budget is chemicals, general field supplies, and gas. Chemicals, general field supplies, and gas. And so that's what the, 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 the and they have to manage it. Now, a lot of pool companies have people coming by the warehouse and getting what they need. And there's not a lot of management that goes into it. A lot of pool companies have people that just swing by and put it on the tab at, you know, Superior, SCP or whatever the heritage, whatever their uh, distributor is. And there's not a lot of accountability and you kind of get what you get. So we believe in having an individual tech level of budget to where we know how much revenue that tech produces and how much they spend in chemicals. So this is how we do it. And then we also are able to leverage Skimmer. So Skimmer, you can show them um, uh, and, and talk about that, Nikki, a little bit about what Skimmer does as well. Yeah, so we we do have quite a few customers that charge separately for camps. And by the way, that is that is the way to go. You know, the, the survey data and all of the all the data that we've seen within Skimmer, the companies that are charging separately for chemicals are are much more profitable uh, than the ones that are including camps. I've heard from a lot of pool pros in Arizona. Oh, you make your, you know, you make your money in the winter. No, stop. Make your money all year round. Um, we do have some good tools that we can share with you. We will share with you as part of our price increase toolkit. If you want to shift your customers from uh, an included model to a plus chems model. Uh, but we have these great reports in here that uh, some people may not know about. And one of those is the chemical dosage report. So you can look at this by tech. You can look at this by customer. You can look at it by month, by year. You know, pick your um, your favorite interval, and it will show you exactly ex exactly what you're dosing in a pool, uh, what your cost is, what the price is, and what your profits are for those individual chemicals. So, if you're starting from scratch and you want to use the chemical spend system, and you're trying to figure out what it is that you are actually using at each individual pool, you have this data. If you're using it in Skimmer and logging it in the app, you should already have this data in here. Uh, same thing for the profit reports. So for each individual customer, you have profitability. And if you've got customers that are floating down there on the bottom uh, that are not very profitable, it's probably time to do a price increase for those customers. Uh, and we have a ton of customers that that join us and tell us, you know, I, I had no idea I was losing money on this pool. You know, people find out that they have leaks at pools that they that were undiscovered because they'll look at their reports and go, whoa, why is this, why is this one pool out of range? 
And it turns out there's a leak at that pool. So there's a lot of good insight that you can get here. You don't have to start from scratch. The good thing is you don't really have to do anything special to get this data in there uh, other than put in your costs and log it when you're in the field, log in the dosages, just like most people do when they use the skimmer app. So you've got a gold mine of data in here that you can always reference and go back to and look at historical data uh, and and fresh data. Uh, literally, this is this updates in real time. That's great. Okay, let's look at the third level real quick. One, one more thing I'll add to. One thing I have noticed, Casey, and I'm, I'm glad you brought it up, is I, I think there are a lot of customers, like you said, who have techs that just come and pick stuff up. The second you start measuring what they're picking up, they're more mindful. When, when folks know that you are keeping track, there is a much lower tendency for chemicals to go missing or chemicals to be overdosed uh, when they know that somebody's paying attention. Got it. Now, let me speak to the chemicals included or not included, because a lot of people go, hey, I want to put more chemicals in pools because I charge more for those chemicals. Does that make sense? Um it's still not good management of the micro level of, of the business, meaning you only want to put in pools what's needed in the pools, right? You don't want to be a snake in the industry that's just adding stupid stuff that pools don't need just to make money off customers. That's how you get a bad reputation, okay? So, um, and then you can still, as your spend is going down with chemicals and do profit increases on your chemicals and on your service rate. You can do both. And so price increase isn't just in, in, in the chemical spending. All of these things are about discipline in your business. It's not about, well, if I have this model, I shouldn't do this or I shouldn't. You should do, you should have discipline at your spending level, discipline at your pricing level. And then this is the last one is discipline at the expense level. Okay. Now I'm going to go quick on this, but it's awesome. Okay. It's so helpful. The principle here is you got to spend some money sometimes to save money. Now, the way to increase profitability in your business the fastest is to have a human being that enters your expenses in every single day for all of your business. You'd say, what does that mean? Every credit card swipe, every vendor swipe, every vendor you know, invoice, um, you know, distributors, anywhere where money's being spent from gas pumps to chemical buying to nets and poles and all the different stuff. Every single day, no matter if your business has 40 pools or 4,000 pools. And you say, well, how do you do this? Well, we started it when we had 13 pools. We now have over 2,000 pools. And we still Every day, enter all of our expenses into QuickBooks. You can, whatever system you're using, that's fine. But we use QuickBooks so that we can have a daily keep up with. What most pool professionals do is wait to the end of the month and they have some outside accountant or CPA or bookkeeper or even somebody in the office. And then they get their financial reports to see how they did for the month. You should know how you're doing every single week of the month. And we'll show you exactly how to get that done. So... If you if if you want to do this, it's daily, weekly, monthly. You need to hire a person. And I say use 2% of your annual revenue um, as a starting point for how much you can afford to spend to hire somebody to save you a bunch of money, okay? And what does this person do? They enter in your data. You do a weekly expense meeting with them. Most pool company owners that we speak with do not do an expense meeting every week. They don't do business meetings most weeks. And so literally for one hour every week on Tuesdays at 2 p.m., we come look at our expenses of everything that we said. Here's what our budget was and here's what our expenses are in every single category to make sure that we're staying in line with everything so we can make decisions like, do we get an oil change this week or next week? Most people just do it when it's needed. Well, we may push it for a week if we need to because we're looking at our our, our budget to expense and we know where we are and we want to hit every single detail of every single line item inside of our budget and run it like a machine. And then also is, is, is this person that I'm going to teach you about to hire is to give them a monthly bonus on savings for your company, meaning give them more money to save money for your business. Okay. Now pull up the process here. I'm asking you to hire a data specialist. You can find them on Indeed. You can find them there, a friend. It could be a spouse. It could be a family member. But all they do is enter your spending data in every single day, all day. Now, 
Um, most of you may not have enough money to hire somebody that does this full time. And I'm not saying you should. So we ran it this way. Here's the math. If you have 100 pools at 250 bucks a month, that's $300,000 of your business. If you took 2% of $300,000, which is 500 a month, that's $6,000 of annual spend. If that person's job was to do price increases and manage just your chemical spending, that one person that you spend $500 a month would increase the value of your business by $246,000 annually just by doing those two things. I'm not even talking about all the other stuff that they could help you with. But if all they did was manage the chemical spending and the expenses in your business and then executing a price increase, the ROI on the $6,000 is 4,000%. So don't tell me you don't have the margin, you don't have the money, I can't do this. You can absolutely do this because they're going to, especially with price increase and then managing your expenses, they'll pay for themselves. And if you want to do a bonus strategy, you can bonus them on the price increase success. Say, go out to all of these customers, if you have 100 customers, and we want to see X percent increase. If you can get X percent of the customers to take it, I'll give you X percent. So incentivize them to save money for your business. And this is a great role that any pool business can have. Now, let's look at the practical side of this. This is what I look at every single week because we have data being put in every day by somebody that works part-time for the business. You can go to the next slide. So we look inside of QuickBooks at a budget to actual, and we're looking at a month over month or a week over week snapshot every single week. Again, I'm not going to go through all of this, but this is a high level of what we do is that we look at this and we're looking at a month to month basis. Hey, why is the total income up 55%? That's a big jump. Well, we made an acquisition. Okay. Operations. Why do we spend 413% more in operations? Well, because we added for the acquisition. So we go through each one of these line items every single week for one hour. And we look at here's where we said we were going to be. Here's where we are. And we have somebody that manages against that. Now, this is not sexy. A lot of y'all probably log off. You don't, you don't think about it, but before you even hire another pool technician, hire this person. You can find them online. You can find them on Upwork. You can find them a million different places. They, they can be virtual. They don't have to live in your town. We have people that work with us in Mexico City. We have people work with us in Orlando. We have people that work with us in Nashville. And because the virtual model, you can just have a virtual person that all you tell them to do is save money for this business and I'm incentivizing you to do it. And here's what your job profile is. Again, we're going to give you all of the, our budget to actual reports and the different things that we look at if you want to see those. Because you got to monitor the health of your business. Real-time data is the key to increasing and boosting your profitability and then making decisions on data, not on gut. Like, I think this is a bad thing for making decisions in your business. You got to have the data. Now, I think that's what we have. Um, here is a QR code, scan that. I'll give you a Google Drive full of resources if you want it. I didn't even tell you this, Nikki, sorry. Um, we're also doing on the form, it's not required. If you want us to do an audit of your P&L to look for your profit boost areas, um, we're selecting three people to do that. And you have an opportunity to write in their open form Here's why you should be ch chosen to do that. Or here's why uh, you want us to do this for your business and let us know um, why. And we're going to pick three and then we're going to go through your P&L together and we're going to work on uh, increase and work like as a basically free consulting of what we do when we look at businesses we're going to buy. We'll look at that for you as well. So that's what it is. And then I send out an email once um, once a week to this list and I don't sell anything. I don't have anything to sell. I'm not selling consulting not selling books, not selling anything. Okay. So it's just helpful content. If you, uh, if you want to be there. Okay. Nikki, what do you have? Yes. And if you're not using skimmer, we have a lot of folks that joined today that are not using skimmer. You can try it free for we'll 30 do days. We'll do Q&A in a minute, it right? Is, yes. We'll do Q&A. Q yes. Okay. I'll go through this fast. So we're not just route management software. It is all of the reports that I showed you plus 28 other reports. It is 
getting really dialed in on your work orders and your pairs and being able to track your revenue and knowing your operating costs. It is communicating with customers, sending digital door hangers that are automated. Uh, so there's a, a lot of really great benefits. The way I like to think about Skimmer is it really kind of closes the gap between the office, the field, and the customers. And it improves that communication and helps you get organized. So if you'd like a demo, visit us at getskimmer.com slash demo. We also have billing available. I just talked to uh, the, the quote on the bottom right there. I know Chantel's here with us today. Hi, Chantel. Uh, but she's using billing and she is absolutely rocking it out. Uh, I talked to Jeff a couple days ago and he's like, man, doing billing used to be like going to the DMV. Uh, and I used to literally dread it. And now I what used to take me three hours takes me 25 minutes. Uh, and so if you are looking at automating your business and, you know, just increasing your efficiency and getting paid faster, uh, check out Skimmer billing as well. Q&A, digital door hangers. Yes, they're called service emails. So anytime you go out and visit a customer, uh, you will, your text or you will log the dosages, the readings, and then take a picture of the pool. And all that gets entered into the app and saved forever. And instantly, or, or when if you're in an area with no service, as soon as you get to a, a place with connectivity, it sends the customer an email saying, hey, your, your pool's clean, here's the pictures, here's what we did, here's your readings, here's your dosages. Uh, and so it's a good way for your customers to have proof of service to know that you were there, especially because you can't just upload photos from the photo roll, you have to do it from within the app. Uh, we've got a few questions, we don't have a ton of time, but... Hey, I, I see the Q and A's. Do you want me to hit through these? Yes, questions? take a few. Uh, uh, there's All a right. lot of questions about how you, how are you doing budgeting exactly? What kind of cards yeah. you're using? I'm going to start with John at top. Um, we see pool companies selling at 12x monthly billing. Do you? Uh, yes, we buy companies based on monthly billing as well uh, because we can't get good financials from them. Um, so usually the smaller companies will go 10x. The larger companies will go 12x. Uh, but companies that are more mature, that have staffs and all that stuff, oftentimes they have better financials and they're measured on a multiple of what's called free cash flow. Okay, John. So yes, that's a that's a decent um, for uh, that's that's a decent understanding of how it works. Uh, Thirty five percent margin on pool cleaning service. Nope, that's uh, that's on repairs. Um, how do you price green to cleans? One hundred ninety nine dollars per visit. Usually about. Uh, depends on if it's a level one, level two, or level three. Um, so if it's a level three, meaning we can't see the bottom, uh, we recommend a draining clean if it's a like a concrete pool and you can do that. If we can't do a draining clean in a liner or fiberglass pool or something like that, then um, we will do like a four visit. So you're looking at like 800 to a thousand bucks to do um, a, a green to clean. Uh, sometimes we can do it cheaper, um, but that's about what we'll charge for those. Um, cause it just, they're a uh, pain in the butt. Um, how many times do you clean salt cells? Uh, we recommend three times a year, but the customers usually only allow us and we'll pay for it twice a year. What are you using to get credit cards on file? We have an automated form system that we use. It's uh, connected to a type form and then sucks it in this secure financial data that goes into all of our systems. Uh, to get credit cards on file. I don't believe skimmer has a way to get credit cards on file. I may be wrong with, I may be wrong. Uh, so we, that, your customer can do a verification and get their, their card on file. They can if you send out a quote. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, but for automated billing, um, we I, actually, I don't know what we use. I'll have to get Renee, um, the, for the detail on the technology, but we have automated billing, um, that we use. Um, is yummy pools charging a set price per visit, including chemicals or a set price plus chemicals? We have all the pricing and the reason why is because we buy all the companies and all the companies we buy all have different pricing so we have some that are flat fee and we have some that are uh per visit plus chemicals um those are two of the primary that we have and so we see the benefits and the downsides of each one um nikki i will say i do have to a little bit disagree on flat fee um we love flat fee um a per visit flat fee uh, because in our area that can become seasonal big time with chemicals in the winter that you maintain a high profitability throughout about six months of the year. And then, and then the reason with flat fee, if you're managing the chemical budgets, like we do, we we're managing the margin anyway. So we know what we're going to get the margin out of it. Um, so we like that one, but we also like per visit plus chemicals. <laughs> we, we like both there's pros and cons to each, uh, in each one of them. 
How do you apply that in the field? We buy chemicals in bulk and our techs load them each morning at our warehouse. Do your techs pick up the chems at the supplier? Yes. We don't do bulk ordering because it's cheaper. I know you think it's cheaper to buy in bulk, but if you buy in bulk, but you don't have somebody managing exactly how much people are taking, or there's not a, an inventory system for that, the savings that you got to buy in bulk is leaking out by people just buying and wasting. Okay. So we've never once seen it where somebody was managing it tighter than you can manage it at the credit card level at each technician and putting the responsibility on them to manage their own chemical budgets. Okay. So that's what I would say. They pick, yes, we pick up at the supplier. Um, how does that work? Spend 10,000 a month in chemicals. How do you just spend 5,000? I still need 4,000 of chemicals. I have to buy to operate. No, what I'm saying is you might not need all of those chemicals. You think you do, but all chemicals aren't equal based on the urgency of when you need to put them in the pool. So we're just challenging the process of, do you really need two bottles of algicide? Could you just live with one? Well, if you're on a budget, you, you might get one. You have to go back to the store and get two. But what we've seen people is if they just have 10 sitting on a shelf at a warehouse, they'll just grab as many as they need, put them in their truck, and there's no management on it. So we're just saying tighten up the management on your inventory. Are you using Divi cards? No, we just use credit cards through Capital One with spending limits on each of the card and spending uh, criteria. Is this is this helpful or not, Nikki? Totally, absolutely. Love the rapid fire. Thanks. Are you using Skimmer exclusively? Yes, we use Skimmer exclusively to track chemical dosages and transfer the data to QuickBooks. Yes, Benny, that's what we do. Based on the averages, we account for a small percentage of our chemicals and monthly service fees. But outside the three chemicals we use, and this is not universal as some clients utilize specialized chemicals, the rest are charged at a rate of about 135% at our wholesale MSRP. If these in included chemicals only for about 5% of the items sold, do you still think it's worth doing? Honestly, there's so much math in that. I don't know. <laughs> I, need to, I need to think about it for a second, Phil. Uh, let me think about it. Uh, how do you handle or recommend warranty or service calls that manufacturers cover? We don't do warranty calls because there's not uh, great money in it for us. Um, so uh, I, again, I'm not saying it's a bad strategy. We we have people. We are we are a warranty center. We can do them. We choose not to do them because we have so many cleaning customers and so many repairs with our existing customers that that keeps us slap busy and we don't do warranty uh, work uh, from the from the from the uh, providers. Nikki, could you connect me with Casey, please? Oh, look. I, I get so many of those, Casey. I feel like you're, feel like you're um, admin sometimes. I'm just glad one person, well, he may not like me. He may be to yell at me, but that no. would be fun. Dan's um, a good guy. Hey, do you still want me to answer these or no? Yeah, sure. Uh, if, yeah, if you sign up for Casey's newsletter, you can reply to his to his emails. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, do you service your clients on holidays? Uh, yes, we just move and condense days around holidays, but we work every week of the year. Um, so we just, but we don't ever skip. So we move, we don't skip. Um, Bob is asking, how do we get the repair calculator? I just fill out the form and I still don't have it. We'll have it out tomorrow, right? Uh, yeah, Renee has got to get that stuff sent out. Um, so it's not an automated send out thing. We've got to send you an email. Sorry about that. You'll just have to wait till give us 24, 48 hours and we'll get it to you. Um, what sort of consuming processes have you automated to save time? Um, scammer, <laughs> everything. <laughs> um, that's a great question. We have a lot. Um, how about I write an email on that? That would be a great email topic. That's a great email topic. I'll write an email on that. Okay. Uh, cashback options on credit cards. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, no, they don't have cashback option on the credit card. I'm sorry. No, they do not. Oh, here's a good question. Do you see the pull industry going in the direction of franchises like 1-800-GOT-JUNK? Um, Yeah. I, well, I see the pool industry becoming professionalized. So, yes, I do think franchises can win. Um, I think there'll be more privately owned 
larger companies that buy smaller companies of like what we're doing and then professionalizing the companies. That's what, that's the movement right now is. And that's actually why we're in Austin as well. We have a meeting right after this with another person that there's a lot of consolidation happening in the pool industry. A lot of people that have been running their business and have 150 customers, 200 customers or whatever, and they don't want to scale a business to 4,000 customers and be the CEO and deal with all that crap. So they just sell their business. So there's a ton of that going on. What else? Any other questions or are you wanting to be done? I think we're good. We've got some smaller ones here, but uh, yes, we will. Yes, we will get back to you on some of these questions if we didn't answer them here. We are we are out of time. And Casey, I know you've got meetings to go to. And I just wanted to thank you sincerely again for, for joining us again and being a part of the Skimmer community and, and being such an amazing voice and, and helping our pros uh, learn new skills. We really appreciate oh, you. And hopefully this is helpful. I, I just want it to be helpful. Um, so so y'all can guide us, send back an email to us. Let us know if we're adding value. If we're not adding value, how could we add more value? We, Skimmer wants to add value. We want to add value. And uh, just I, I, we believe that all tied, that, that there's plenty enough pulls for all of us to make a good living. <laughs> so, so we want everybody to do better. The better the industry does, the better we'll all do. The better the customer base will be trained to 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 work with you as a professional, not as um, an amateur person that they can take advantage of. Right. All right. Thank you all. Thank you, Suzanne, uh, who is with us, who threw those polls together. Suzanne works in success for us, and I really appreciate you jumping in and helping today. And thank you, Casey. Everybody, say bye. Bye-bye. See y'all later. Bye.